In today's video, we're going to paint five really easy miniature landscapes. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, we do all things watercolor, as well as drawing tutorials, mixed media, even a little bit of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. It's completely free. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for channel members. So I've got five really quick, simple, miniature little landscapes for you today. You can use them as practice. If you're completely new to watercolour painting, they're great things to sort of get your teeth into to get started with. You can also give them as gifts or even make them into little greetings cards like this one. Do watch until the end because I'm going to give you a few hints and tips of how you can actually make them into greetings cards, you know, the practicalities of what glue to use, that sort of thing. But first of all, let me show you the colours I'm going to use. Don't worry if you don't have the same colours as me it's still going to be really easy for you to follow along. So let's look at the materials I'm going to use for this video. Now there'll be one or two things like masking fluid and we may use some oil pastel, but don't worry if you haven't got those things, I'll give you some alternatives. Now I'm going to be using my essential set for this tutorial simply because it's a basic split primary set and you're likely to have colours the same as this or very similar to this, so there's nothing going to be too unusual. So we've got a cool yellow, this is Hansa yellow, you can use lemon yellow. I've got a warm yellow here, this is diarylide, something like a cadmium yellow deep, or one of the warm transparent yellows like Indian yellow is a good yellow to have. Again, don't worry if you haven't got it. I've got phthalo blue here. If you've got a beginner's set, you may have cerulean instead. That's nice too, it's just a little bit weaker and a bit more granulating. Phthalo is stronger, it's a turquoise blue. I've got some ultramarine here. Here I've got some permanent rose, so you'll need some kind of pink. If you again have a beginner set, you may have alizarin instead of this one, which is not quite as bright, but some kind of pink based red or crimson based red. I've got more of a scarlet red here. This one is pyrrole red, but some kind of cadmium red is fine. I've got yellow ochre, which most beginner's sets have. And I've got a couple of browns here. I've got raw umber and I've got burnt sienna. You may have burnt umber, that's fine too. And finally, I've got Payne's Grey. I'm going to be using a synthetic watercolour brush and I'm going to be working on stretched paper. Now, it might seem a bit extreme to work on stretched paper when just making something small and making little greetings cards. But actually, what I tend to do is I tend to stretch a board of paper and then divide it up into squares so I can make lots of these things. I'm not worry that the paper's going to wrinkle, but that's absolutely optional. You do not have to work on stretched paper. If you're interested in learning how to stretch your paper, however, I do have a video for you and I'll pop that in the description of this video. So these are the only colours that I'm going to use today. If I need a secondary colour like a green or a purple, I will mix it. So first up, we're going to paint a very English landscape, similar to the ones that are near me. Meadows, a pathway, a little white fence and a pretty cloudy sky. All of the drawing in these is very, very minimal. So let's get started. So I've drawn some squares on my paper. Of course, you can do them closer together than I've done them. I just don't want it to be uh, distracting for you that they're so close together. And I've actually used a piece of, uh, well, it's just a piece of watercolour paper. You can use a piece of cardboard as a template. Just makes it easier than drawing loads of grid lines on your paper if you're doing several at once. This one's cut to 10 centimetres wide by 7 centimetres high. And for the first one, we're going to start by drawing a bit of a horizon line. I want it a little bit below centre and I want to make sure it's square-ish. So what I'm going to do here is just use this piece of card or you, you can use a set square or anything that's been cut on a right angle and just get a bit of a line here. You don't want it to be too straight. So let's just, you know, draw it by eye, but give yourself a bit of a guideline there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little pathway coming out from the horizon. So we're just going to take it across like this and you see how it's very, um, it's very flattened. So you don't want to do it too straight up. And as it comes around the curves here, you'll notice that there's more width here as they come out. And that's just going to help our pathway to look realistic. You could place it anywhere. Of course, you could have it coming in from the other side. And I'm just going to indicate maybe a bit of a tree line here. We're going to do a little white fence in the distance here. So I've got some masking fluid. This is actually SAA Blue Mask. You can use any brand. I think this one's going off because it absolutely stinks. <laughs> I haven't used it for a long while. It's not the fault of the masking fluid. It's the fault of me for not using it for a long while. So what I'm going to do is along here, and you can draw this first. It doesn't matter because all the pencil will come off at the end anyway. You can draw this if you want to, or you can just go straight along like this. 
and we can just do some little uprights. I'm actually using an embossing tool to apply this. You can use a ruling pen or toothpick or anything at all. And we, we don't want to block off completely the horizon there. So at least where I live, you often have fences that kind of stop like this and have little bits at an angle. And we can just take this across. So your fence can be broken if you want to. It's just going to give us that little bit of interest against these bushes and things in the distance. I mean, likely it would be much smaller than this when you compare it to the size of the pathway going into the distance. But these are going to be you know, little studies or greetings cards. So don't worry too much about realism. We're just going for a nice effect. And now we're going to allow that to dry. So in this painting, I've got a pathway. But remember, this could equally be a river. If you want to make it a river, you can just use similar colors to those that you use in the sky and you'll get the effect of a river. Remember to reflect a bit of green for the trees as well. But we're going to make this one a pathway. So what I'm going to do is start by just putting clean water on the sky. You want to spread the water down to the horizon line. Go right across the trees and the, uh, the fence. You're aiming to wet the paper without too many puddles. And if I get anything too wet, I can dry my brush here and just lift up any excess water. Try not to dab the tissue on the paper though. And what I'm going to do is start at the top here and just pop some blue in and just leave some areas of white. And these will look like clouds. If you find it all looks a bit too icy, you can put the tiniest amount of pink in and just warm that blue up a little bit. You want to continue this down. I'm going to clean my brush and go back to more light blue here. Colours typically get lighter and cooler as you get down to the horizon. You see how we've just got a few soft edged clouds here. I'm not worrying too much about the edges here. If you want to, of course, you can use some kind of tape to get a lovely clean edge. I'm actually as well having to lean forward quite a lot to paint on YouTube. In other words, I'm further back than I would like to be from my work so that my head doesn't get in the way of the camera. But if you're wondering why um, it's a little bit uh, scruffier around the edges, that's the reason. So what I'm going to do here is just put some yellow directly onto the paper. You can use a cool yellow like this one, like a lemon. We can mix it up and use some warmer yellows too. And that will mix with the blue and we'll start to get some green appearing. I'm going to do more in this area here and make this a bit more defined. But at the moment, I just want to get an idea of distant trees. I'm going to paint the pathway now. I'm going to use some raw umber, which is a very weak color. So it's this one here. But you can use any brown or gray and just water it down. And I'm going to paint my path in. I'll keep the color quite light because we'll have darker greens around it. Just be careful when you go up here. Don't touch very wet paint to the sky there. You can stop a little bit beforehand. What you don't want is a very strong lot of brown bleeding up into the sky. And I'm going to put this in here. If you want a bit of color variation in this, you could go in with a little bit of yellow ochre in places or a tiny bit of Payne's Grey. But just don't allow anything to go too dark on this pathway because overall we want it lighter than the rest of the landscape. Now I'm going to let this dry. So let's paint some nice bright grass at the front here. So I'm going to mix directly on the paper and we can start with this sort of bright yellow. Don't worry if you overlap the edges of the path slightly, that's fine. I'm just grabbing a little bit of the phthalo from my palette. You can see how strong that is. So just add some water and just let that blend in a little bit. You can always put a tiny touch of pink. It will just neutralize those greens like so. I'm going to add some of the warmer yellow as I come forwards. Remember to do the same on both sides of the path so it doesn't look, you know, like you've got a completely different landscape from one side to the other. It's all looking a bit too yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more bright yellow and then more blue so that we get a little bit more green going on. I've actually got a touch of Payne's Grey in this paint here, just that was in my palette. So I'm going to bring this across like this. Try to get rid of any white areas. So I've got a watercolour pencil here and I'm just going to use this to add some details. Now this is totally optional. You know, don't worry if you haven't got any watercolour pencils. I'm just going to add a little bit of 
scrub or something here. Always want a default to kind of straight lines going horizontally. If you have horizontal lines, they'll always look pretty okay. You can also, with this, if you want to get a few little grasses in the foreground, remember to make those larger at the front and smaller as they go into the distance. Keeping those areas at the horizon fairly light and bright. I'm going to pop a bit more bright yellow on that side. And then again, we need to let this dry. So I've changed to a smaller brush. I want to get some little trees and bushes and things here because that's going to make our white fence show up when we take the masking fluid off. Now you can see, I, I thought at first I'd got a drying line here, but actually there's something on my paper here. I don't know, it could be a fold in the paper or something like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I feel the sky could be a brighter blue. It's possible again just to put another layer of water on and put more blue in. But in order to keep this video a reasonable length, I'm just going to go straight in with some little bits of tree now. So just taking in, I've got some darker blue here. You can use either or preferably both of the yellows. Make sure you go nice and dark down the base there where it's covering that fence because you need that white to really show up. And you want to keep the colours mixing one into the other. Keep these tree lines broken. Let's go for some brighter green over here. Let's go straight in with that yellow there. Using a little bit of Payne's Grey, which can always be used to mix muted greens. You see how we're keeping these colours blending? So it doesn't just look all like one dark colour that's all the same. We've got a variety of colours here using this warmer yellow and the cooler yellow. Once the paint starts to dry, I can drop little bits of color in there. It'll naturally bleed upwards. As I said though, do remember to keep it dark at the base where there would naturally be more shadow. And it's also going to allow the white fence to show up. At this point, if there are any parts of the foreground that you feel just need a little more color, we can put some clean water on and drop more color on top. I want to keep this area here towards the horizon light because otherwise my line of dark trees won't show up. But further down here, if I feel just needs to be a bit stronger, I can drop more color in, go in with more yellows, and blues. You see how we get a more solid looking color by going on top, this is called glazing. It always makes things look a bit less transparent and give them a little bit more weight and it's starting to look like a really pretty, very English type of landscape. So finally, this is completely dry and we're gonna remove the masking fluid. I like to use an eraser. So my little picture is pretty much finished, but don't forget, this is the moment where you can go back in if you want to and just add a little more color to anything that you think needs strengthening. If I want the white fence to stand out more, I could put a little bit more dark around it. I can go back in with watercolour pencil or anything else that's diluted a bit during the painting process and just brighten up my painting until I'm 100% happy with it. If you're enjoying this tutorial, can I ask you quickly please to uh, click the like button, click that thumbs up for me. Really helps me with the YouTube algorithm, as do comments, particularly shares. And of course, don't forget to subscribe because it's completely free. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. For our next miniature landscape, we're going to paint a sort of seascape, a sunset. It's really simple, this one. We're going to have a little sun or you can make it into a moon. Now I'm going to be using oil pastel for this as it resists watercolour paint. If you don't own an oil pastel, you can, of course, use candle wax. Remember that candle wax is transparent, so you'll need to lay the colour down that you want first, let it dry and then put the candle on top. In that way, it'll act just like the oil pastel that I'm using. Sounds complicated, but actually it's really easy. And yes, you can use children's crowns too. Just don't try and do this with soft pastel, the ones that are like chalk because they'll just disintegrate. But any wax or oil-based pastel will work absolutely fine. So let's get started. So for this one, I'm going to go for the horizon about halfway up. There's no need to measure that and again, take a line across. Now this one I want pretty flat and that's because it's going to be C and the C needs to be flat in the landscape. So we're going to take it across like that. I want to do a little sunset in the middle here, a sun. So I want something to draw around. Could equally be a moon, of course. I'm going to use this pencil that's not been cut for a little circle and just place it here. 
fairly near the horizon, roughly in the middle, and I'm going to draw around that. You could do it by eye, or you could even use something like a small coin or a washer, but I think that works quite well. Now, at equal distance from the horizon, you're going to do another one below it. Again, there's no need to measure this or get it, you know, spot on. We're just going for roughly a reflection. Now, with this lower one, we're going to keep this much more broken. So again, with my masking fluid, I'm going to fill this area in like this. Now, if you don't have masking fluid, you can just paint around this area or you could paint it in afterwards with something like a titanium white, a white gouache. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to leave this one a little bit more broken with maybe some sort of horizontal lines because we're going for this effect of ripples in the water. So just don't fill it in quite 100%. And now we're going to let that dry. So I've got some oil pastels here. Um, they're both the same, just the paper wrap has fallen off this one. I'm going to use this warm pink for my sunset, but you could equally use an orange like this one. And what this is going to be is this is going to be the ripples in the water. So we're going to have the sunset in the sky, which we'll do with paint, and then it'll reflect in the water. So what we're going to do is get the oil pastel and rub it across in horizontal lines like this, keeping it fairly close to the horizon line. Try not to go actually across the masking fluid because it may pull it off. And you're going to come in like this and then perhaps a little bit up here. And you see how the oil pastel has just stuck to the top of the bumps of the paper. You can't get this off, so be careful how you apply it and don't take it outside of the area that you're painting in. Now I'm going to paint my sky. So I'm going to start off actually with a little bit of water here. I'm going to go for a bit of ultramarine this time maybe even a bit of Payne's Grey, because this is a sunset, so we're going to need things to be quite dark. And then without allowing this line here to dry, I'm actually going to go in with some pink like this. And we could take it right across our sun there, or our moon. Later on, we can leave that white, or we can paint it bright yellow, whatever you fancy, really. And I'm going to get this idea of a sunset. As I said, you can use yellows, you can use oranges. Just be careful and remember that if you use yellow or orange and it overlaps with your blue, you could end up with green. If that happens, whichever colours you've chosen, drop some pink on top and it'll kill the green. And I'm just going to go a little stronger up the top here. Remember that watercolours dry lighter. And then we're going to leave it alone. So this next bit's really quick and really easy. I've swapped to a much older brush and that's because oil pastel tends to come up onto the brush and it doesn't come off again. So oil pastel can ruin your brushes. So don't use your best brush for this next bit. And I'm just going to get the same color I used above, which is the ultramarine. Really easy this. I'm just going to come across nice and dark and I'm going to take this across like so. And you see how that pink is just showing up and looking like reflected sparkle on the water. Remember that sunsets inherently have strong lights and strong darks. So do go dark enough with this. You know, if you need to go straight in with some dark paint like this, you can add extra pink if you want to. Try not to leave many puddles because that could lead to drying lines. And again, we let this get completely dry. So everything's completely dry now. I'm going to just gently remove this masking fluid and any pencil marks should come off along with it. Now, if you want it to look sort of like a moon, then you could leave it like this or even paint it a very pale blue. I'm going to go for a bit of drama and use my Diarolite yellow. And just pop a little bit of light color in. Don't go too dark with this because you want to get that real glow to it. You could equally do it light pink. I think that looks really pretty. And again, at this stage, if you want to add a little bit more drama, a little bit more color, then feel free to do that. You do want to avoid hard edges though. So even if there's an area down here where you're not adding more paint, I would just bring that down with clean water all the way to the base. This will ensure you don't get a hard drying line where you've put the new color on. For our next miniature landscape, we're going to paint a pretty little red and white lighthouse. So a little seascape, the lighthouse is going to be sitting on some rocks. 
There's actually one of these not too far from me, maybe an hour or an hour and a half's drive in a place called Haysborough. At least that's how it's pronounced. It's actually spelt Happysburg, which of course is how I said it to the locals when I went there. Much to their amusement because everybody who's a tourist gets it wrong. It was actually Haysborough. It's a great subject this and I think it's really a good subject. If ever I want a card for men, and men can be quite hard to make cards for, I find these nautical scenes to be quite a nice subject. So let's draw some rocks in the front here and rocks are kind of square and curved if that makes sense. So we could have some come up like this. You can pretty much make them up. Some larger ones here and we're going to take a little lighthouse up here. So what you want to do is have lines that are coming out towards the base like this. And then this top needs to curve upwards. So make sure it doesn't curve downwards or go straight across because we're looking up at this and perspective says that it would curve up. And then you're going to make a smaller version of the same thing on the top like so. And sometimes they've got a little bit at the top there. And then we'll just make a little bit of a railing around the top. And then we're going to do some stripes on our lighthouse. There are certainly lighthouses like this here in the UK. Now, in order that we get that sense of perspective and it looks tall, if you notice, I've done these little tiers here, these little stripes getting narrower as they go up. And also we can just straighten out the base one because the more we look up at the lighthouse, the more curved the lines should get like so. And the smaller the stripes will get as they go up and away from us. And then I want to put a horizon line behind here. So once you've drawn your lighthouse, you can judge where that goes. We'll keep it fairly low here, like so. And this is going to be our C. And I'm just going to put the tiniest touch of masking fluid around the top here, on that little point there. You have a choice with this railing here. I think I'll do mine actually in masking fluid too. But th these are sometimes white and they're sometimes black. So if you don't have masking fluid, you can just paint this in with some dark paint at the end. It doesn't have to be white. You can put masking fluid directly on top of pencil lines. They'll just come off as you lift the masking fluid off later on. So I'm just going to put that little railing there in masking fluid. But as I said, it doesn't have to be white. You can do it with dark paint. Or you could paint it on at the end with white paint too. And now we let it dry. So I want to get some white sparkles on this water to start with. And I'm going to use a household candle and I'm going to drag it across just like the oil pastel remember that you can't get this off once you've placed it on so be careful have a practice on a scrap of paper first it's very hard to see where you're putting it and so we'll just have to hope for the best i'm going to wet the sky again but i'm actually going to avoid the area where the lighthouse is at least the main part of it and let's go in with some nice bright blue remembering again darker and brighter up the top, lighter towards the horizon. I'm actually going to go across the top of the lighthouse here because I've got masking fluid on and that very top bit I'm actually going to do dark and then I'm just being careful to paint around the edge here and then we'll go a little lighter down the bottom and come down like this. Now our lighthouse is going to be red and white stripes so it's important that you've got enough blue on the outside here that it'll show up against the sky will come like this. I'm going to continue down into the sea but I will later on put a little more paint on top so that we can see the horizon line but for now I'm just going to pop some blue down here. I'm going to avoid the rocks like so. If you're new to painting try not to go back up into the sky to fix anything because once the uh, once the paint is damp and you touch it with a uh, with a wet brush Quite bad things happen. So I've got a very subtle effect there. It's possible to do this effect twice. In other words, I can let this dry and then put more candle on top and I'll then be reserving the underneath colour because candle wax is transparent. So I'll be reserving that underneath light blue there. And for now, we're going to let this one dry. All I'm going to do now is, now it's dry, I've got some cerulean mixed with some Payne's Grey and I'm just going to take this across the C part again. Realised I'm using the wrong brush. 
We'll take this across here. I'm going to lighten it slightly as I come forwards, just to brighten it up a bit, just by putting some clean water in. See how this side here has gone a little bit dark? I'll just dry my brush and lift out some paint there. And again, we let this dry. So let's paint some rocks. I'm going to use the Payne's Grey and a little bit of my brown colours. So uh, let's just start here with some watery Payne's Grey. I'm going to, I think I'll take this all the way across. Now you absolutely could paint each rock individually. That would look quite nice. I don't have time to do that today, but you know, if you're doing several of these cards, you're painting the same view several times, you could, of course, you know, go between one and the other and allow things to dry. But there's another way of getting these edges to show. What I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of brown here, so I'm going to put a touch of brown in there. Don't go too warm with these colours because rocks are generally quite cool. You can also use a little bit of the French Ultramarine if you want. Ultramarine will just cool down the browns and see how we're getting this idea of shadow between the edges. Now, because they're all wet, they will tend to bleed one into the other. So what we can do then is we'll get some paper towel and we'll use the paper towel to sort of make those edges. So for instance, I can't see the edge between this rock and the one above. So what we can do is we can just pick that out like so. You see how we get these little lines appearing as well. So again, let's bring this edge here back and down here. And by manipulating those slightly darker colours, you can actually just start to get this rocky impression. Don't worry if you get any drying lines and hard edges in these because it's all the more going to make them look like rocks. I've swapped to a smaller brush here. At this point, make completely sure that things like your sky are bone dry because otherwise when you paint these little bits in, you will find that they bleed out into the sky. So I'm going to come in here and do this top piece like so. Then I'm just going to get some bright red from my palette. This is Pyrrole red, but you could use any red for this. They tend to be more of a scarlet red than, you know, an orange red. And we're just going to come in and paint this section here. And these come in different sort of shapes. So they don't all have, you know, two stripes. Some have more, some just have one. If you pop red and white lighthouse into Google, you can get some fun examples come up. And I'm just going to paint down here until we reach the rocks. At this point, you can decide if you want any more shadows on your rocks. They need any more definition. Those shadows can be hard or soft edged. It's usually nice to keep some soft edges. And again, you can always blot to add a little bit of texture. So everything dry here. I want to remove the masking fluid at the top. I also want to get rid of all this pencil. Do take care near the red because red can smudge, dark colours can smudge even after they're dry. So make sure it's bone dry and try to keep your eraser lines just in small areas. Again, at this point, we can just sharpen up any areas, make anything a little bit darker, including if you want to, adding further shadows to the rocks or further colour to the sea. And I'm just using the Payne's Grey here. These touches of dark will just bring out the bright colours in the lighthouse. For our next miniature landscape, we're going to have a little mountain scene with sky and a lake in the foreground to give it some interest. So for this one, I want an idea of a horizon line where the mountains start, but I don't want it actually to be too straight. Um, what I'm going to do is just make some little dots just to give me a sort of an eye guideline here. And I think I'll have this almost as sort of bushes and things here, or maybe some smaller rocks. We'll just make that line a little bit ragged there. And then I want to draw some mountains in. So just by eye, I'm going to take sort of a large one here. We're going to have these mountains overlapping and getting darker as they come forwards. If you've ever seen that thing of aerial perspective, you'll know that things in the distance are lighter and then things in the foreground get darker. So we can just sort of overlap like this and get these overlapping hills. And then here in the foreground, just to give a bit of interest, we'll have a bit of a lake. And actually, I think I'm going to draw just almost the bottom of that tree line there. You want to break it up in places. It can be quite hard on the eye if your eye 
is just blocked completely by a horizontal line. And then we're going to make a lake here. Now be careful not to do this too circular because it will look as if it's tipping up. So for the perspective to work, you want to make it really quite flat and just come in like this, something like so. Let's make it a bit narrower at the back there. And there's our lake. Maybe we've got some more trees here. And then we're ready to start the painting. So we're going to start by putting some sky in this one and also putting the water in here. So I'm going to put a little bit of clean water down towards the mountains, like so. And then just come in the top here, again with my phthalo blue. You sometimes need to warm a colour like this up, but considering we're painting mountains here, there would be a tendency for cooler colours anyway, so I'm just going to let that be and just use that colour by itself. And then let's just put a little bit down here. Just let some clouds appear where they want to. Now water reflects sky, so let's have some clean water in there as well. You don't have to worry about things like exact positioning of clouds, just as long as you get sort of an impression there that there's some blue and some white. Try to avoid any hard edges within that area. And then we're going to let it dry. So we're going to do these mountains in layers and I'm going to start by taking a power layer across. I'm going to go across the whole thing and let that dry and then we'll bring the colours darker as they come forwards. I'm going to go in with some of my Payne's Grey and I'm going to mix it in. I've got a little bit here mixed blue with a bit of pink in and I'm going to start going across here. I want to add water because I want it to be pale and all I'm going to do is take this across the whole of the mountain area. So all of the mountains I'm going to put in this and then we're going to layer over the top and make some darker ones later on. But it won't hurt to take this layer here across everything like so. As I come down to the base here, I'm going to bring this through and pop a little bit of warm yellow in and that's going to start to give the idea of some foliage here and a little bit more ultramarine like so and we can even put the odd touch of green towards the base of these mountains at the back. I'm going to continue coming forwards here but I want the front to be a much brighter green so I'm going to put more yellow in. This is the lighter yellow. I've got a lot of pencil on my paper here. Don't forget that I need to draw much darker for YouTube than you will need to draw and of course you can remove pencil as you go along. I'm just not worrying too much about that at the moment. Got a bit of the warmer yellow here. And now we'll let that dry. So I've got some ultramarine here and a little bit of some phthalo mixed with some Payne's Grey there that's just sitting in my palette from one of the other ones I'm doing. I'm just going to mix that in and get a slightly darker colour. I'm going to paint it on these mid-range mountains like so. I think this one here, I'll do the same, but I'll just add a little bit of water so it's perhaps slightly lighter. It does look like it might be a little further away. And I'm actually going to start to get a bit of texture in these. So just with some paper towel scrunched up, we can just get a few little marks on here and even perhaps drop a tiny bit of warm yellow at the base of the mountain. My cat has got up and is harassing me. So whilst I go and give him some food, I'll let this dry. So I want to go darker on this bottom one here, but not so dark that we get rid of this nice contrast here. I'm going to go in with a little bit of Payne's Grey. It's a strong colour, so do be careful with it. And then we're going to come down to the bottom of what I would consider to be the tree line. And then I'm going to work into this area to get some darker green so it shows it up against the light green below. So I've got a mix here already in my palette, which I can drop in. So that's just both the blues and some paints go. So we can drop these in. If you drop these in, they'll start to bleed upwards into the less wet area. And we'll add some yellow as well. It's going to give us that green effect. And you see how these bleed outwards. So we get this impression of foliage. I'm going to get a little bit of Payne's Grey as well and take that down the bottom in places. I'm going to dot it around. I don't want it to look too sort of straight liney. And I feel they're bleeding up too far, so I'm going to just blot a little bit along the top there, like so. And you can continue to work in with greens. It's possible to allow this to dry and then to work harder edge trees and bushes on top. 
So though I said this one was finished, actually now it's bone dry and I'm gonna just take any pencil lines out. Now it's bone dry, I really think it could just do with maybe a few fir trees down here. I'm gonna get my Payne's Gray, mix it with some Thalo, a little bit of the Hansa yellow. We can make a nice dark color. Just get an idea of some more defined tree shapes around here. I'd be inclined to take some clean water along the bottom here just to blend them down at the base. Do be sure to leave one or two gaps. Do them different heights so they don't look too regimented. Lastly, we're going to do a snow scene with some really pretty lilac colours. Of course, a snow scene doesn't have to be for Christmas, but we all know it's very suitable for that time of year. So let's get started. So let's draw our snow scene here. So we're going to have some sort of snow drifts. So we're going to come in something like this and then have maybe another one in like this. So just getting this idea, little bits of snow. We'll have some trees up here. You can indicate roughly where they're going. I don't like to do too much drawing for these. You can just sort of put a few uprights in and then later on we'll be able to, you know, put those in with paint. At the moment, I'm just going to keep them as simple lines. What I want to get in the sky here and also on the trees is an idea of a snowstorm, of there being lots of snow. So I'm going to splatter with masking fluid, which will keep these areas white. So I've got this old toothbrush here and I've got my masking fluid here. Now, if you don't have masking fluid for this one, what you want to do is wait until everything's dry and then you can splatter on top with some white paint. Now, I want to mask off the bottom part here, but I need to keep it quite rough. So I was clearing out an old diary this morning and I've got some pages here. You can use a piece of magazine paper and I'm just going to put across like this. You want to make sure it doesn't have to be the same shape exactly as this horizon line, but you want to make sure that the paper's torn, not cut, because otherwise the masking fluid splatters will end in a hard edge. All you need to do then is dip in. And of course, you can mask off all the way around the outside edge. And what we're going to do is point the toothbrush down at the paper and you're going to get your thumb and pull it backwards. This ensures that the masking fluid will go forwards and downwards. Again, mask off any areas where you don't want it. But if you're just going onto the white edge of the card here, you know, it's going to come off. It's not going to show. And I've got plenty there. Now I'm going to let that dry. So we're going to put some sky in here. Often in snow scenes, everything's very purple. There's lots of um, sort of lilac shades in the shadows. So we're going to go for more of a ultramarine type sky. So I'm just going to put a light wash of ultramarine on, first of all. We can take it down across where the trees are going to be. It won't do any harm at all. It's much better to do that than to try and sort of paint round the trees. Got quite a light colour here. This is a French ultramarine, so it already tends towards a bit of purple. If you've got a cooler one, you can always add in a little bit of pink if you want to. I'm going to get just a touch of pink and mix it with my ultramarine and pop some of that at the top here. Remember, the darker we go, the more the snow is going to show up when we take the masking fluid off. You don't want to bring purple too far down the picture because if it mixes with the green of the trees, it could go a little bit grey. Whilst I've got this colour, I'm going to use it for my snow shadows. Whilst I'm doing this colour, I'm going to use a little bit of sea salt. Now, it's very hit and miss using salt on your paper. Sometimes you get beautiful crystallizations that can look very much like ice crystals. Sometimes you just get little interesting dots, but it'll be nice anyway. And the bigger the granules of salt, the better. Now, what we want to get here is an idea of shadow with one side as a hard edge and one side soft. So it looks like this area here is behind and this one is in front. So I'm going to put some water sort of behind and above that line. And then just getting some of that purple I've mixed. I can come down like this. So you see I've got a hard edge this side and a soft edge behind. Anywhere that I think there might be a little bit of shadow, I can wet and take some purple in. If you have a hard edge you need to soften, just take some water along. I'm not controlling this too much or worrying too much about areas like this that might bleed. The only thing to watch here is that you don't completely cover up all the white. Put a little bit more colour here. You see it's going between sort of purple and a pinkish purple, depending on how I'm mixing it. So I'm going to go a little bit darker down here, soften that edge. Then I'm going to put some salt in. 
Now this needs to go in when the paint's wet and that paint's already starting to dry. So just in order that I get some kind of effect, I'm gonna mix a little bit more paint and drop that next to it. I've actually got a tiny little bit of the phthalo blue in here as well, just to give us a little bit more of that cool ice crystal look. And that needs to get completely dry. One or two of those fell in the sky here. That's not gonna make any difference at all. We'll just let them do their thing. They need a considerable amount of time to dry. And I mean hours, possibly overnight, before you remove them. So I've picked off the, uh, the salt off of the sky. I've left this on down here. Now, I've smudged all this up because I'm trying to make a YouTube video and I'm painting too many of them at once and I'm leaning in my work. You're not going to do that. So what I want to do is I'm going to have some dark fir trees here, but just as a sort of a background so that they appear to, you know, be layered into the distance. I'm going to do a layer of light green and I want it to have a soft edge. So what I'm going to do is add some clean water about halfway up like this. Gimlet the cat has just actually jumped onto the uh, table, the big table. Will he appear on camera? I hope not, because if he does, it means he's walking across the board. I'm just getting here. I would say it's um, my Hansa yellow, but it has actually got a bit of blue in it because I've been painting green. So we've got the equivalent of a lemon with a tiny touch of blue in there. And I'm just going to pop that in. And that's going to sit behind my fir trees later on. And now we let it dry. Now I'm going to brush the salt away. We've got some interesting shapes here. Now, sometimes these form little ice crystals and sometimes they just make these interesting sort of ice block shapes, but I think they're quite pretty, so I'm gonna leave them alone. I'm gonna keep the masking fluid up here at the moment because I want the, the white spots to appear on top of the dark trees. I'm gonna use the same mix I used for the mountains. I'm gonna do these ones a little taller. And again, just take them out gently like this. I'm going to take these trees right the way across. You can vary the heights as you like. Once that's dry, I'll erase all of this masking fluid. I'll just take an eraser in little circles until it all comes off. We should get some tiny little snowflakes over everything. I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks. So at the beginning of the video, I told you I would tell you how to make these intercards. Now, if you're thinking of having them scanned and printed professionally, I would probably think again, unless you're going to get something like a thousand printed, you almost always cost yourself a fortune doing this. It's quite easy to kind of mass produce these cards. You can stretch a board of paper, divide it up into squares and sort of paint each section as you go. In other words, do all the skies first, do all the masking fluid first. It's amazing how quick you can produce them actually. When it comes to actually assembling them, you've got two options. You can do them, as I said, and then cut them out and stick them to a card. Or you can do them actually just on watercolor paper. You could just cut the size yourself. You wanna score down the middle with something like the back of a pair of scissors so it's fairly blunt. That way it'll fold easily. You can decal edge the, uh, the edges. So if I show you one I did here up close, I'm trying to get it so I can show you the, the edge. If you see the edge there, I use some decal scissors on that, so that's a lovely effect with watercolor paintings. You can buy ready-made cards. I've got some here. I think these are um, Bockingford. Get cards, envelopes, everything in a pack. There are lots of craft shops and art material shops online that make these ready-made watercolor cards for you to paint on. It is cheaper, however, to cut your own out of watercolor paper. If you take the first route and you cut out your picture and you want to stick it to your watercolor card, or you can stick it to a standard cardstock card, and those are much cheaper to buy, then you need to make sure you're using the right kind of glue. You want to avoid using something like a PVA glue because it's wet and it will cause your paper to crinkle. Really, you've got three options. You've got spray adhesive, which actually works well if you're gonna have some kind of mass production. You do have to have your room well ventilated and work quite quickly. You can spray about five or six of these at a time on a sheet of newspaper and press them down quickly. Spray adhesive is fairly expensive. The next option I've got for you is to use a glue stick. Here in the UK, we have Pritt stick. I'm not sure about other countries, but these sticks that sort of wind up like a thick looking lipstick and you can apply that glue. It's not wet, so it won't cause your paper to crinkle. The third option and probably the most secure actually is to use double sided tape. It can be a little bit slower and more fiddly to apply. So perhaps not the best option if you've got hundreds to make, but it certainly sticks them down very fast. You don't need to put tape all over, just across two edges or around each edge will be absolutely fine. And that will adhere it nicely onto your card. And then you're ready to gift it to whoever is lucky enough to receive a beautiful hand painted card. 
So do let me know in the comments which one of these landscapes you like the best. They really are very, very small and very quick to do. Let me know as well if you'd like more subjects like this here on YouTube, or perhaps florals for cards. Remember, even if you say you really love videos like this, if I look at the YouTube analytics and the video does really poorly, it's hard for me to make that sort of content here on YouTube. So in order to make this video successful, if you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, it's gonna give that video an extra push. And before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. You can also grab some free downloadable PDFs. There's even a free watercolor painting course you can take for no money whatsoever. And of course, you can find out all about my comprehensive paid courses, including beginner's watercolor and beginner's drawing. And if you enjoyed this video, you can watch another watercolor painting video right now.